Got another set of questions for the amount of substance topic. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the first thing obviously we need to know is the formula for barium oxide. So that's BaO contains barium 2 plus ions and oxide ions, or 2 minus. So if we've got 1.5 grams of barium oxide, we can work out how many moles that is. So just mass over MR, so 9.78 times 10 to the minus 3. Each mole of barium oxide contains a mole of barium 2 plus ions. So that means we've also got 9.78 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of barium 2 plus ions. So to turn that into a number, we just multiply this by Avogadro's number. Which in standard form, and the three significant figures, comes out at 5.89 times 10 to the 21. And the next part, so we're told the MR of the hydrated barium chloride is 244.3. We've got to work out the value of X. Well, we do know this part of the formula, so BaCl2, that's got an MR of 208.3. So the remainder must be the waters. So that's coming out at 36. So how many waters is that? Well, if we divide that by 18, we get 2. So x is 2. Moving on to the next question now. So this is a percentage yield question, and we've got to give our answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. Well, straight away you can see everything's to three significant figures, so I'm going to give my final answer to three as well. Now, for percentage yield questions, you can either work in moles or in mass. I always work in moles. So the first thing I want to do is work out the moles of the bromocyclohexane that we're starting with. So mass over MR, 0.03376 moles. So if we look at the equation, so if we've got that many moles of bromocyclohexane, we should expect to make the same number of moles of cyclohexane. So now we need to calculate the actual moles of cyclohexane that's been formed. So mass over the MR of cyclohexane. So that's coming out at 0.015 moles. So to work out the percentage yield, we take the actual moles, divide by the expected moles, and multiply by 100, which to three significant figures is 44.4%. Moving on to the titration now. So you'll notice I've got my usual visualization diagram there. So they've taken 10 cm cubed of vinegar from the bottle, diluted it into um, a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask, obviously that contains the ethanoic acid. It's fed into a burette and titrated against barium hydroxide. So we know the concentration and volume of the barium hydroxide and we know the mean titra was 25.45 cm cubed. So the first thing I'm going to work out is the moles of barium hydroxide that have been used in the titration. So concentration times volume, just remember the volume has to be in decimeters cubed. That's coming out at 1.125 times 10 to the minus 3. Applying the mole ratio, there must be twice as many moles of ethanoic acid present in this mean titra. That's 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3. So what we need to do now is scale up to find out how many moles of ethanoic acid are in here, but there will also be the moles of ethanoic acid in the original vinegar because they were effectively just poured into there and then topped up to 250 with water. So the way we do that is divide by that mean titra. That's going to give us the moles in one centimetre cubed and then multiply by 250 and that will scale it up to what was in there, which is also what was in that 10 cm cubed. So that's 0.0221. Last thing we've got to do is work out the concentration of the ethanoic acid. So that's just moles over volume so 0.0221 divided by 0.01, 10 cm cubed in decimeters cubed is that. That's coming out at 2.21 moles per decimeter cubed. Moving on to the next part. So one assumption the students made is that the only acid in the vinegar is ethanoic acid. So if there were other acids present in the vinegar, the actual concentration of the ethanoic acid is going to be less than what they've calculated.
So we're moving on to the final question. It's going to be an ideal gas calculation because we've got the volume, we've got the pressure, and we've got the temperature. So what we need to do is calculate the moles of D and then work out its molar mass from mass over moles. So first thing we need to do is rearrange the ideal gas equation for moles, PV over RT. Now we'll put the numbers in. Just got to be careful with our unit conversions here. So pressure in the ideal gas equation has to be in pascals. So 101 kilopascals is 101,000 pascals. Volume needs to be in cubic metres, but they've given it in cubic centimetres. So all I do is put a 10 to the minus 6 after the cubic centimetre number. So that puts it into metres cubed. We're dividing by R, the gas constant, 8.314 times temperature, which has to be in Kelvin. Well, it was in Kelvin, so we can just use that number. So the moles are coming out at that. That dot, dot, dot just means that I haven't written the full calculator value in. And all we need to do now is work out the MR, so mass over moles, which comes out at 70. And the final thing we need to do is give the molecular formula for the alkene. So there's a reminder of the general formula, CNH2N. So if we've got five carbons, will have 10 hydrogens and that has an MR of 70. So the molecular formula is C5H10.